Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Natalia Schneidmiller talking here and I am on a mission to help every woman um, teach her how to manage her mind so that she can handle anything that comes in her life, comes up in her life and so that she doesn't create any fights in her relationships because of those things. And that is why I share on my podcast all sorts of examples from all over life, not just some things focused on your relationship with your son. So that's because I believe that things that we bring into our relationships are not just specifically to relationships. We bring in all of our other stuff that we're affected by. And if we don't know how to um, process emotions about those things, if we don't know what's going on for us, if we don't know where all that stuff is coming from, we will then carry it into our conversations with our people, with our kids, with our partners. And if we're not feeling great, we will cause fights ourselves. So I'm on a mission to sort those things out for you, to help you understand what makes you feel certain things and how to deal with them, what to do with them, how to process your emotions, how to comfort yourself, how to talk to yourself, and then to not bring it to your to your people, to deal with yourself and then show up lovingly to your people. So today I want to talk to you about f- choosing to feel good on purpose um, as a habit. And specifically, I want to give you an example when you're driving. But I think it's just an example of a habit that you can choose in any activity. And I wonder if you do that because I thought that most people do this because I was doing it. But then I saw one person, I was driving with this one person, I'm not going to call them out, but I saw them driving and they weren't doing that. And so I was a little bit surprised. I thought, oh, what? I thought like this is, everyone knows this and they didn't. So that's why I'm actually called to share this with you in case you don't know. And this actually happened a year or two ago. And for some weird reason, it's coming to me now. And I'm really trusting, like it's coming to me now to share it with you. And I'm trusting my wisdom to share with you because then I think someone needs to hear it now. So when you're driving, this is what I do. I look at it as an opportunity to help other people. And if I see a person who needs to merge into my lane, I like scan for that and let them go, right? Or if they need to turn or if um, they, I need to let them pass or just give them a turn to go, I always make sure that I help them out and I let them go first. Especially like around school, there's lots of people leaving and people need to give each other turns. So I just always practice a habit of letting them go first for a couple of reasons. Number one, it feels really good to help other people. And I am after that feeling. That's all I'm after. Yes, they're, you know, the other person benefits, but I benefit as well at the same time. And I'm after that feeling. And that is how you can practically choose happiness in a specific practical situation. So when we say happiness to me, Oh, the word happiness is pretty vague. What what does that really mean? How do you, you know, what are we talking about here? And so when I break it down in this situation, when you're driving, choosing to help another person is a very specific, right? Choosing to let the other person go first. That's very specific. And it's very specific the way I think about it to say, It feels good for me to let them go first. So that's very practical and specific. And this is how in my mind I see it is helping another person equals me feeling good equals happiness. So notice how we're going like situational, practical, and then we're making it vague. We're like, oh, this is what happiness looks like when I'm driving. And so when I saw this person not do that, and I saw this person fight for their space on the road, I thought, well, that's pretty crazy. I thought everyone lets the other person go first and chooses to feel good, Uh, right? Otherwise, when you're fighting for your space on the road, you're pretty much choosing to feel bad, because you feel scarce, like there's not enough space. You feel like you have to fight the other person 
that feels bad too, right? You're fighting and you might be swearing or whatever. You might be mad. Like if the other person gets that spot, then you're mad at them. And that doesn't feel good. That's choosing unhappiness. That's choosing to feel bad. And that's missing, to me, that's missing an opportunity to feel good and to help the other person, right? And so I think that that is like an analogy for any situation in life that you can apply. Like you talk about with your kids, with your partner, with your friends, you always have either an opportunity to help the other person or an opportunity for you to fight for your needs and not feel that good, right? Because you're kind of in a fighting mode, in a scarce mode, in a, uh, I gotta get some for me and it's me versus them or, and there's not enough for everyone. And that does not feel good. And I don't believe that that's true. I feel like there's enough for everyone. I really do believe that. I feel like there's a, it's a you and me world. That's why you helping them also right away helps you. And this is also how I think karma works. It works immediately. It's like a, it's a full, um, Feedback is instantaneous. So when you let the other person go, right, when you're on the road, when you let them go, you instantly feel good and that's karma, instant reaction. The same thing with something bad. If you do something bad for someone, you instantly feel bad. That's karma as well. It's like constant, instant feedback. So there's nothing bad that's going to happen later to you. You already felt it. You already felt bad from what you just did to the other person. And sometimes I notice that, for example, with me with driving, if I am unconscious, well, if I, you know what I mean? If, if I, I'm conscious, I'm driving, but if I'm distracted by my own thoughts or by the kids uh, or whatever, and I don't pay attention and I don't let the other person go by first, then right after that, I'm like, oh, shoot, like, oh, I'm sorry, right? Like, I even say, oh, I'm so sorry. And I notice that, that I don't, like, I don't beat myself up, but I also know why that happened. I know that, you know, I was just not paying attention, and I look at it also as, like, a little missed opportunity, but it's okay because I... Pra- try to practice it all the time and it's a and it's a habit that I try to enforce all the time and so um it's just kind of a little re- I don't beat myself up right it's just a little reminder to oh hey let's pay attention maybe you know there's another person next that I need to let go let let go first right so don't beat yourself up if you miss those things that's totally human and these things will happen but also notice like if um I'm not like mad at myself and I'm not mad at them, right? Uh, Whereas uh, uh, sometimes if people are mad at me, for example, like if I didn't let them go and they might be like honking at me, I also, I don't get mad at them. I'm just um, saying, sorry, you know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't aware you were there and I don't get mad at them in return. So I'm just creating like a, premise for myself to uh, be nice on the road, to just take care of other people, to let them go first, to to help them out before me. And that feels really good. That's just choosing to feel good. Pretty selfish reason, but so what? I think being selfish is how we should be. I don't. I think selfish has a negative connotation. We have very bad reputation for being selfish, but I do believe there is a version of being selfish that is healthy and that we should strive to be selfish in a way that then allows us to take care of other people. And here, like in this scenario, you actually are being selfish and selfless at the same time. You're helping another person and you're taking care of how you feel at the same time. And the reason why I am really stressing uh, feeling good, like you're choosing to feel good, is because how of how important it is. And Abraham, um, the teachings of Abraham by Esther Hicks, 
have really um, helped me really appreciate that um, feeling good is a goal in itself, right? We want, want to be happy, but it has to start with small feelings of feeling good, right? Then all, then a bunch of feelings of good, then will add up to happiness. And so, and if we focus on feeling good, of creating a feeling of good for ourselves, then that will attract more feeling good. And so that's just great because then we know that if you create this moment of feeling good, then it will be like a magnet for the next one. Okay, so I encourage you to try this for yourself and really try to help as many people as possible on the road, off the road, whoever, right? And really try to think of like specific, specific examples where you can do this. Because when... um I think we don't go specific enough when when we hear people teach, you know, like love everybody, be nice, be kind, like be kind, right? That to me is super, super general, super vague. I love to break it down to smaller pieces and, and the specific examples. And then I go, ah, so that's what they mean, be kind. Like in this example, be kind means let the other person on the road go first, let them merge you know, slow down so they can merge. Now that's, that's be kind, right? And then once you make it a habit, then you then create being kind. So uh, there you go. I'm repeating myself now, but I hope you get the, 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 the point. And um, of course, this then impacts all of your relationships as well, right? Because you will then practice the same habit of showing up with your people, how you do that like when there's something with any situation you always will have uh, an opportunity to either to help them or to fight for your own needs or to kind of fight so choose to help them right or to choose to help them help themselves like the kids for for them right for me I'm now dancing the fine line of okay where do I actually step in and help him versus uh, do I just um, enable him to do this himself, prepare him to do this himself, and encourage him to do it himself. So that's a a really fine line because I have seven-year-olds who ask me for help, and I keep telling them, you can do it yourself, you can do it yourself. So that's um, me actually trying to hold back the help and trying to encourage them to do it themselves, which is actually helpful, right? They're growing. They need to learn to do things for themselves. So, okay, guys. Well, I love you all so much. And of course, I'm here always to help you with your relationships, with your relationship with yourself, how to feel good, how to stop fighting with your people, um, how to stop fighting with people on the road. You can always find me on my website, www.coachingnatalia.com and uh, sign up for a free session. It's completely free. You get to finally have a chat with me. Tell me everything that's bothering you and I can tell you how I can help you. And uh, you can always email me as well at natalia at coachingnatalia.com. Okay, guys, have a great week. I love you all so much. Bye.